Good evening everybody and welcome. It's seven o'clock on Thursday the 8th of October 2020. Who would have honestly thought way back in March when we were doing began doing this daily prayer that we would still be here as the nights were getting dark, uh, that autumn was coming. But here we are on the 8th of October 2020 for our night prayers. Uh, if you'd like to follow the liturgy of our night prayers, you can find that on the Church of England Daily Prayer website. Um, you can also find it on the Church of England Daily Prayer app. So if you're able to find that, it means you can join in with us um, all together with the words in bold type, or you can join in with any of the words um, just as you see fit as we go through. And we're going to be using um, three readings from scripture this evening. And um, the first one is Psalm 16. So if you'd like to find that in your Bibles, that would help as well. You can read along with me when we come to Psalm 16. The second reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 to 79. That's known as the Song of Zechariah. Um, and that's a really important reading in the Bible. Our final reading and the reading I'll be reflecting on a little bit as we go through is a continuation in Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. So if you'd like to find those in your Bible, stick a marker in, stick a finger in, um, and we'll be able to go through this together this evening. And hopefully, as we come on this dark evening to bring our day to God, we can just take heart from the messages of the scriptures that we're going to read. As I was saying just at the beginning, it is a really dark evening today. And I don't know the difference between this time last week and now on these Thursday evenings when I do these prayers is really stark. And it, it reminds us of the, the year that's gone, the year that's passing by. Um, and as we bring our days to God at the minute, uh, there is a heightened level of anxiety, isn't there? And I think it's just really good to come together at this time of night and just be able to give our day just hand it over to God, but not only for the day that's passed, but also to take this sort of opportunity to give God tomorrow as well, because, you know, maybe he knows what's ahead for us, but, um, and we can just sort of be assured by his love, really, as we look ahead to a very uncertain, I think, few weeks ahead of us all. So as we begin, we're just going to take a couple of seconds to just be quiet, just bring our day, everything we've been through, to just bring it to God. Let's just take those couple of minutes now. And so beginning with the liturgy from the Church of England Daily Prayer website. So this is the order of prayer for night prayer. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And we've taken a little bit of time already this evening to sort of think back over our day, but now we've got a chance to think back over the day of the actions, of the thoughts, of the experiences that maybe we're not very proud of. Maybe the things that we've done, maybe the things that we haven't done. But either way, we've got this chance now to give them to God as well, to be able to say to God, look God, I'm not proud of these things. But here you go, please forgive me. So let's say this prayer together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. And we can reply, O oh Lord, make haste to help us. And we join in, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we continue to be in that magnificent time, it's like six months of the year, where we're in that time where we're after Easter, where we can think back to Easter Day, the resurrection of God, the resurrection of his son. And we can say at the end of that prayer, glory to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because then at the end we can use that amazing Easter declaration of 
Alleluia. And it doesn't fail too long before that this period of time will come to an end and we look again ahead um, through the period of Advent. But for now, we can rejoice and say Alleluia. And so we come to our first reading from Scripture and it's a psalm, Psalm 16. So you might like to join in with alternate verses or you might like to say the whole thing through with me. There's a little refrain for at the beginning and at the end, which is, The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. And so let's join in together with Psalm 16. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. So from verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in you I have taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are in legion that many run after, they drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup, in your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land, indeed I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices, my flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. And that refrain again, the Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self, for you are our portion and our delight, now and forever. Amen. And we say together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so we come to our first Gospel reading for this evening. This is, um, as I said at the beginning, it's Luke chapter 1, verses 68 to 79, and it's known as the Song of Zechariah. And he's speaking both to God, but he's also addressing his newborn son, who will grow up to become John the Baptist. So Luke chapter 1 verses 69, sorry 68 to 79. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. So there's some little responses here next. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And we go again to the Bible, to the Gospel of Luke. And this is our final scripture reading for this evening. And it's Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 13. Then Jesus said to them, 
Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give, give, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. There's just a, a couple of things that sort of makes me reflect on um, from that last gospel reading. It's this line, isn't it, that we all know, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open. And what I really love about these words of Jesus is that they kind of place the responsibility for a relationship with God through his spirit squarely with us. Um, as many of you know, I'm a teacher by trade and as children grow, they do develop a sense of awareness and confidence that they have a part to play in their learning, that they're more and more responsible for finding their own understanding for different things. And so it is here, as we are children of God. God is there, ready, waiting, and he loves us enough to give us his son, to give us his most precious gift, the gift of himself. And we can't change that. God loves us. We have no choice in that. God loves us. I'm loved by God. You're loved by God. Full stop. But although that doesn't change, other things do change. We change. And so we, we have the responsibility to approach, don't we? We have the, the um, responsibility to seek. We can knock. And we can ask. And just as a kind of finish off of this little reflection, one of my favourite newer worship songs has these amazing words in it. And the words that still give me kind of goosebumps now. The words say, come and stand before your maker, full of wonder, full of fear. Come, behold his power and glory and with confidence draw near. For the one who holds the heavens and commands the stars above is the God who bends to bless us with an unrelenting love. I find those words amazing. God's unrelenting love. And yet that unrelenting love is there. It's free. It's given by grace. But we have to draw near. We have to draw near with confidence, with wonder and with fear to ask, to seek um, and to knock. Amen. And so we move now into a time for our own prayers, for our own kind of intercessions, um, our own prayers of thanks, our own prayers of request. Um, I'm going to say a few short prayers for the world, for the church and for ourselves and for each other and then I'll leave a gap for you to offer any prayers that you'd like to um, this evening. So let's pray. Father God we pray for our world. We pray particularly this evening for the wider restrictions that seem to be now becoming inevitable. 
We pray for our government, both at national and at local levels. We pray for those largely ordinary men and women who are making such difficult decisions to balance livelihoods and jobs with people's health. Father God, at this time, we particularly pray for businesses. They may be worried about closures, they may be worried about loss of earnings, but all will be worried about the loss of jobs and livelihoods from the people who have, in some cases, worked with them for many years. Father God, tonight we pray for our world. Loving God, we pray for our church this evening. And as the nights draw in, as the darkness comes, we pray that the church shines as your light. The church may be the door, Father God, that people come to seek you. They may come to ask, they may come and knock. And we ask this evening that in this, down this dark night, that we may be ready to share and to serve and to love in your name as your hands, your feet, here on earth. Father God, we pray for our church. And we pray as well, Father, for ourselves, for each other. And we pray particularly tonight for Carol in hospital. And we pray for others known to us who are poorly. We pray for those caring for them, and we pray that your hand will be on them, as they may perhaps be alone with no visitors, but we pray that they know your love, and we pray that they know our care. Father God, we pray for ourselves and we pray for each other. And we use the pr first prayer as a collect for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. <coughs> Excuse me. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. So bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so in peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And so the Lord bless us. Watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us peace. Amen. And thank you for joining me this evening. Take care.